This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom. Words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. Today, consider this your vitamin or supplement for your mind, your heart, and your soul. And wherever you download podcasts, would you mind subscribing to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom? And it would really be greatly appreciated if you could leave a rating and a brief written review. Today, we are going to talk about finding your mission, finding your purpose. How do you do what it is that you feel that you are called to do or you're being asked to do? Let's break it down a little bit. And the first one is, let's talk about deliberate practice. You can find books and articles and blogs that discuss deliberate practice. Find something you want to do. Find something that you're attempting to do. And start with deliberate practice. Not just trying to get a little better. Not just trying to do a few things, but deliberate practice. So your question would be, what differentiates deliberate practice from just the regular kind of practice that folks do. Well, there are two or three things that separate what is called today deliberate practice. First of all, it has to be toward a specific goal. Uh, What is it that you're trying to accomplish? What is it you're trying to learn or do or be or a skill to develop? Um, It can't just be a general sort of uh, I want to know a lot of things. It has to be directed toward a specific goal. And then, many times when we're, when we're implementing habits in life, and once we get going on that, um, we kind of do the habits by just uh, rote and repetition, and we don't really give it much thought. We just do whatever it is we say we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish, and just do a habit by just continually doing it. Well, deliberate practice is different than that because you have to have focused attention. If I'm going to learn to play an instrument, I I have to have some focused attention, time that I'm going to practice, things that I'm going to play. If uh, my deliberate practice is to learn another language, let's just say Spanish, I have to have a specific goal. I want to be fluent in Spanish by a date certain and list the date. And then you can't just practice. Yes, you have to practice, but it has to have focus and attention so that while you're doing it, you're focused on your goal. The goal is to learn a subject, and I'm going to focus. Perhaps what sets deliberate practice apart from just the regular kind of practice that you and I do where we're trying to develop a skill set and take something that we're not presently doing and making it to become a practice, a habit in our life. But what separates that from deliberate practice is deliberate practice also involves feedback. You have to get feedback. There's a story that I believe it's James Clear tells about Joe DiMaggio, the greatest hitter of his generation, and without question, one of the greatest hitters in the history of baseball. During the off-season, a reporter had come to his home to interview him, and as the interview was about over, they're standing on the front porch, and the reporter says to Joe DiMaggio, you are the most natural hitter I have ever seen. You're just a natural-born hitter. And immediately, Joe DiMaggio's uh, facial expressions changed. He said, come with me. I want to show you something. And so he leads him through the house and then down into the basement. But Joe doesn't turn the light on in the basement. He says, I want to show you something that I do several times every day. And he picked up a bat and began taking practice swings. But what was unique about the practice swings, it wasn't just the matter of swinging a bat. He would announce before each pitch what kind of a pitch it was and where it was located. It is an imaginary pitch. He said it's a fastball, low and away, and then the reporter could hear him in the darkness swing. Then he'd put the back back up on his shoulder and he'd say, next, 
is a slider tight and inside and high, and he'd hear the bat swing, the air moving. And he did that for several times, and then he would go over after each after each pitch and swing, imaginary pitch, and, and make a mark on the wall with a piece of chalk. When he was done taking several swings, Joe went over to the light switch, turned the light on, and revealed to the reporter that throughout this basement were chalk marks on the wall where Joe DiMaggio kept a record of the kinds of swings and the kinds of pitches. And he said to the reporter, don't ever say that I'm a natural hitter. I work hard to be a natural hitter. Joe DiMaggio was teaching the reporter about deliberate practice, focused attention, his specific goal to be able to hit a baseball better. And the feedback was he kept the chalk marks and uh, kind of evaluated. So in deliberate practice, not only do you have a specific goal and your attention is focused, but you need to get feedback. If you're trying to learn a foreign language, find someone who is fluent and a natural born speaker of that language. Ask them, how does my accent sound? Am I missing something? What can I do to get better? So deliberate, deliberate practice will have a specific go, goal, focused attention, and we are continually looking for feedback. This will help you find your mission. When you know what your mission is, when you know what your purpose is, then you need to have deliberate practice at getting better at the skills you need in order to do your job. <coughs> the second thing that you need in finding your mission is to develop an incredible depth of knowledge. We live in one of the most amazing and remarkable times of all creation, and that is that vast amounts of knowledge are at our fingertips. All you have to do is type something in, hit send, and you'll receive all kinds of information through the World Wide Web. We can almost reach out and talk to anyone who's an expert in any field and get some information and to find something that we're looking for. You are not going to develop an incredible depth of knowledge by laying on the couch and watching television for six to seven hours a day. If you know what your mission is and what your purpose is, then learn all you can, stretch yourself mentally, Increase your knowledge. Don't just know a little bit. Really dig deeply into the subject and become an expert in it. I heard someone say the other day that you don't have to know a whole lot about a whole lot. All you need to know is a lot about one subject or one area. Find your niche and go deep. Whatever that subject may be, that has something to do with your mission and purpose, go deep, get the best books, go to the best seminars, look at the best blogs, listen to the best podcasts on that particular subject, and consciously, purposely, every day, do something to develop your knowledge on that subject. That will help you as you find to fulfill, find and fulfill your mission. The third thing I would say, if whatever your purpose and mission is when you discover it, is do something daily to get better. Now, there are two different things that we're talking about here. When we're talking about doing things to get better, we could be talking about developing a habit set. Get, get a habit in, that you need that will help you to do what it is you have been called to do. Um, if you if you want to go to the gym, don't just say my, my desire is to get healthy. Just say I'm going to the gym every day for 20 minutes or whatever it is. If you want to be a writer, I'm going to start by writing five minutes every day, five days a week. Whatever it is, you have to do something. You have to take an action. You have to make a positive attempt to develop that habit. 
But in order to fulfill your mission and your goals in life, not only do you need habits and need to develop positive, good, formative habits, you also need to develop skills. Now, going to the gym is both a habit and a skill because when you first go, you don't know how to use all the equipment. Find someone to help you. Learn how to operate the equipment. So to get better, you're going to need to both implement good habits, but you're also going to have to learn some skills, whether that means hiring a coach, whether that means reading uh, on the subject, whether it means having a conversation with someone who you know or you have heard of who has mastered the particular skill set that you're trying to accomplish. In order to find your mission, you're going to have to do things to get better. Here's what your mission, there'll be some of you listening today that say, you know, Dr. Ron, I don't have a mission or really have a purpose. Well, here's how you would go about finding your mission. And if you don't know what your mission is, then I challenge you today, find out what your mission in life is. And your mission in life will be discovered at the intersection between your heart's desire, your heart's deep gladness, someone said, and the world's deep hunger. There's something you have a passion for, and you can help solve a problem, meet a need, prepare yourself. Many people think that some folks get to where they've gotten in life through luck. It's the fact that they worked, they prepared, and then all of a sudden, an opportunity will cross your path that's tailor-made for you. So find what it is you were created to do. Do deliberate practice. Have a specific goal. Focus your attention and seek feedback from people that you trust and you believe in and who know how to do what it is you're trying to develop. Develop an incredible depth of knowledge. Take some subjects or a subject and really learn all you can. Do your best to become a self-trained expert. Do something every day to get better. And that can be in your personal life as well as your professional life. And again, where you're going to find your mission is at that intersection of what makes your heart happy and what is the hunger of the world that you've been placed here to help with. Regardless of where you are today, my friend, you are a leader. You are where you are on purpose. May I even say a divine appointment. Make sure you're ready for the opportunities as they come. I believe in you. I even believe you're doing a whole lot better than you think you are. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, and productivity, and a whole lot more. I hope today this has been like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind, your heart, and your soul. Wherever you download podcasts, would you mind subscribing to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom? and leave a rating and a brief review. And until next time, find what it is you're supposed to be doing and do it with all your heart. Until next time, this is Dr. Ron. Join us again for Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom.